Give back to stay on top. An imbalance between rich and poor is the oldest and most fatal ailment of all republics. Plutarch. This is a uh, an internal memo uh, strategy from Citigroup not too long ago, 2006. And it talks about how the wealth inequity here in the middle, uh, we think this income and wealth inequity, plutonomy, helps explain many of the conundrums that vex equity investors, such as why high oil prices haven't seriously dented growth and why global imbalances are growing along with the equity bull market. They go on to talk about how the rich are getting richer and what could go wrong with that. So the risk, that, and this is on I don't know, page 10, our whole plutonomy thesis is based off the idea that the rich keep getting richer. This thesis is not without its risk. For example, a policy error leading to asset deflation would likely damage plutonomy, or the, or the rich getting richer. Furthermore, the rising wealth gap between rich and poor will probably at some point lead to political backlash. Whilst the rich are getting a greater share of the wealth, the poor a lesser share, political enfranchisement remains as was one person, one vote. At some point, it is likely that labor will fight back against the rising profit share of the rich, and there will be political backlash against the rising wealth of the rich. This could be felt through higher taxation on the rich or indirectly through higher corporate regulations, or through trying to protect indigenous laborers in pushback on globalization, either anti-immigration or protectionism. We don't see this as happening yet. There are signs of rising political tensions. However, we are keeping an eye on this development. So this is an internal memo of one of the largest banks on Wall Street. They know that the rich are getting richer. They see no no reason to stop that, and that they're merely just keeping an eye on, on this uh, eventual tide that's going to change. Well, this is eventually going to lead to a collapse, very bad things. And one of the things that uh, the Babylon elite came up with, which I think was brilliant of them, the Babylon elite saw that if left unchecked, the top 1% would end up owning all the wealth of a country. Simple math shows that if the elite or the corrupt can grow their wealth at, say, 11%, and the average man can only grow it at 3%, in 70 years, they would own all of the wealth of the country, at which point the Babylonians saw only three outcomes to such a consequence of wealth concentration. The need for external injection of wealth from an outside kingdom through war. They saw this as a temporary solution, as more wars would be needed. Two, wealth distribution through violent uprising. The serfs, the serfs kill the top 1% and take their wealth and redistribute it. This also is temporary, as the most ruthless revolutionaries will simply fill the void and work to secure their position. So basically the elite now have a choice. They could either continue to expand the war, which they're currently pursuing, and stop internal rebellion. So they're, they're actively doing that too. But right now they don't see any outside threat to their system. The Babylonian elite came up with a better way to skin a cat, a debt jubilee. They would forgive a majority of the debts and freely redistribute all their wealth back to the people. This usually started when there was a new king. They did this to secure their position, keep the serfs happy, and start the cycle off again. If they started out with 1% of the wealth and gained 90%, they would give back 80% of all their wealth and start at 10%. But the key factor was they had all the monopolies and control of a system that made them wealthy in the first place. And maybe the next jubilee, the elite might only give back, say, 70% and start off with 20% of the wealth. From the serfs' perspective, they were given freedom and a chance to start over again. Productivity grew in leaps and bounds as people were able to keep the fruits of their labor. And again, the key to human happiness is progress. Let me give you another example of this. The next time you play Monopoly, try this. If you're winning the game and you have multiple monopolies and there's no other threat of other monopolies, give away 95% of your cash to the rest of the players. Watch how happy they will be to continue to play the game and watch how quick you win your money back. You can keep doing this over and over again without any real threat to your power. In the end, one person has a monopoly and everybody is broke. Is that really the system we want for our children? The problem now is that the bankers use their power to suck up all the wealth and they remain hidden behind their political sock puppets. So while they continue to amass all their wealth, they hang these political figures out in front of us so we eventually thrust all of our anger on them. And when the people take their frustration out on the political party that is in power and hope that the other party is an answer, people are never given the choice to throw the whole system out and put another in its place, except for one special time in history. 